Its name means place of nothing, yet this bleak realm is a fountain of life. The question is, how does life survive here in the Namib Desert? In the heat of the day, they gather to quench their thirst. Relief comes to the African plains, to the herds and prides, wherever there is life-giving water. But even as calm spreads through the ranks, an animal's guard can never be down. This is the Africa we know. Across the continent, the life and death struggles play out, always set against the same backdrop. The waterhole, the river, these are the crossroads of life. Where there is water, the drama of survival is perennially staged. Water has shaped the creatures of Africa. It has defined their behavior, their intricate relationships, their anatomy itself. What would Africa be without water? The answer stretches over 2,000 kilometers along the continent's southwest coast in a vast desert called the Namib. It is some 55 million years old, perhaps the oldest desert on Earth. Temperatures can hit over 50 degrees Celsius. In an average year, it can hope for no more than two and a half centimeters of rainfall. Yet somehow, these sands harbor a phenomenal wealth of wildlife. The secret to Namib's success is born on the wind. The morning fog. Mist blowing in from the Atlantic blankets the desert in dew. The moisture is fleeting, but in its wake, the land is transformed. Where the ground is firm, a lush carpet of life spreads. Lichen can't store water, so its survival is precarious. But so dependable is the fog it relies on that a single plant can live for hundreds of years, one passing day's dew at a time. To reap the harvest of mist, a tenebrionid beetle mounts the crest of a dune and raises its flanks against the wind. Drops collect, trickling down to its mouth.
Even for these evolutionary wonders, by midday, the heat becomes unbearable. They scamper ceaselessly, driven on by the scorching sands. Their feet barely touch ground. The Aporosaurus lizard performs its own thermal dance. It manages a minimum of contact without so much as missing a step. But the appearance of a predator will send the lizard scurrying for cover. The Sidewinder is its most dangerous enemy. It has earned its name. When temperatures rise, it retreats where it's cooler and safer as well. Here, it's invisible to predators and prey alike. Lying low is the snake's recourse. Not so the meerkat. It commands a periscopic view of the expanse to guard against intruders. Still, it too withdraws to the cool of the earth, occupying underground caves it often appropriates from other animals. Meerkats are highly social animals. There's safety in numbers, and up to 30 individuals may gather to frolic and forage. In play, the young learn the skills of survival and the subtleties of meerkat society. assumes the lookout, leaving the rest to attend to other business, like scouring the desert for scorpions, a favourite food item. The meerkat is immune to their sting. This animal's best defences are speed and vigilance. It is ever on the alert. When grooming, when feeding its young, it seeks out the most elevated spot. There, it is master of all it surveys. The Namib the meerkat knows is a seemingly endless vista. But wide as the desert is, its terrain is remarkably varied. The meerkat's advantage is lost where the unbroken sands give way to mountains. Here, what little rain falls is trapped by the bedrock. The scant water is an invitation to life. Amid this moonscape flourishes the aloe tree. Its glory of blossoms attracts the sunbirds. Their beaks are custom made to plumb the depths of each flower. tree hardly seems alive at all. Yet in bloom it is exquisitely transformed. The 
hoodie plant saves its flowers for a momentous occurrence in appreciation of the occasional downpour, rare as that is. Life ever tenacious seizes each opportunity. Studded rock fields harbour cactus-like plants, a magnet to peach-headed lovebirds. Their haunt is a desert unknown. They defy the Namib, even as they define it. This is a realm of many faces. This too is a part of the Namib, the strip of shoreline where the desert meets the ocean. For more than 20 colonies of Cape fur seals, here water and food are in ready supply. As many as 100,000 seals at a time come to Cape Cross with a single-minded purpose, to breed. At peak season, from October to December, a 270 kilogram bull must fight for his status, to lord over his harem of up to 50 pregnant cows. For the seal, these shores are a banquet. The same Antarctic currents that douse the desert in fog also stir nutrients up from the deep. This upwelling stocks the Namib's waters with marine life. Few deserts on earth are graced by such a thriving population of seabirds. Cape gannets by the tens of thousands flock the beaches of Rock Island to nest. Here they have plenty of food and high winds to buoy their flight. Cape gannets have only one offspring at a time. A nesting pair will abandon its chick at only nine weeks of age. The birds are large and space along the shoreline is at a premium. Colonies elsewhere prefer cliff faces where they can nest without fear of predators. Here though, the lure of the ocean's bounty is irresistible. Come night, the desert's nocturnal denizens emerge. Those like the Cape Fox, who won't suffer the daytime heat. Not all the Namib's creatures have learnt to tap its morning fog. The fox must scrape and scavenge for its living. Insects, reptiles, even drifting bits of vegetation are its lifeline. This is the only true fox of southern Africa. It cannot rely on the whims of the ocean mist for its water. For the fox, the answer lies in the sparse wells gathered over eons underground.
The giraffe is hardly an animal of the desert, yet in the Namib it has found a foothold thanks to deep-rooted vegetation that thrives here. Still, it must drink, and in that quest, it has found an unlikely ally. Tracks in the sand signal its presence. A telltale tree, stripped of its nourishing bark by the Namib's crowning jewel, the desert elephants. This is no mirage, though only the Namib and the outskirts of the Sahara can boast such a sight. They are taller than their counterparts throughout Africa, perhaps to aid their stride in the long treks they must take to survive here. A generation ago, they numbered 300. Now, less than 100 remain in the wild. Still, countless creatures depend on them to survive, for they have an uncommon ability to summon water from the desert's depths. They can travel for four days without drinking. What compass guides them, no one knows, yet onward they march, directed perhaps by instinct or long memory passed down through generations. At journey's end, the work begins. Remarkably, the elephants actually dig for groundwater. Once they find it, they gorge themselves on up to 340 litres at a sitting. When conditions are right, they have drink to spare. Enough to satisfy themselves, their calves, and the legions of creatures who follow their every footstep. Virtual sand grouse travel long distances between their feeding grounds and the elephant's watering holes. The males have developed an extraordinary adaptation. Adorning their chest are fine under feathers designed to store moisture. And so, after drinking, they're able to carry water back to their young. The scarcity of water in the Namib makes for odd bedfellows. A desert springbok can ill afford to be choosy about where it drinks, even if it must share its oasis with an enemy. A pair of black-backed jackals is a lesser threat compared to thirst.
there is no shortage of anomalies in the Namib. One is perhaps the signature species of the desert. The Welwitchia is a mysterious plant that miraculously outlives every drought. It can draw for years on the rare storm water stored in stream bed gravel. The plant in turn offers nourishment to firebugs who come to harvest its sticky juices. On their migrations, the insects carry pollen from the male plants to the female. A single Welwitchia can live a thousand years or more. No doubt it would have witnessed few changes in that millennium, save for one milestone less than a century ago. The ancestors of these horses were introduced when the German protective army left southwest Africa during the First World War. Some cavalry steeds lingered behind and many escaped to the desert where their descendants now endure. The Germans founded settlements on the outskirts of the Namib but here, within its parched centre, only this last vestige of their presence remains. Still, people have lived here for centuries. The Herero are the proud stewards of the Namib. Their colourful Victorian clothes harken to the age when missionaries ventured here during the 19th century. The Herero have large families and a long-standing tradition of herding. In search of water, the men regularly lead their goats on great journeys through the desert. The size of a family's herd is a matter of pride, and nothing is spared to ensure the welfare of the animals. In a place where watering holes are so few, the Herero are often in conflict with the Namib's beleaguered wildlife. For all life here, the question of survival depends on one reserve alone. Water. Throughout Africa, its abundance or scarcity is the great arbiter of life. Here in the Namib, it is finally, in all its forms, what brings life to the desert. Well, tomorrow, the return of a firm favourite on five. We're going back to the wild animal rescue.